Good day, learners! Welcome to our science class. And for today's lesson, you will learn new knowledge on living things and in their environment. This is Sergio Arvelante, and today we're going to talk about energy flow in an ecosystem. From the previous lesson, you have learned that stability of ecosystem depends on how high or low its biodiversity. The higher the biodiversity, the more stable the ecosystem, which means higher chance of survival. First, we will be discussing the ecology and how organisms interact with their environment. Ecology is the study of the relationships between living organisms, including humans, and their physical environment. It seeks to understand the vital connections between plants, animals, and other organisms to the world around them. Ecosystem is the geographic region where plants, animals, and other organisms work together to form a framework of life. Energy is vital to all living organisms to sustain life. The primary source of energy is the energy coming from the sun, which is the key for the plants to make their own food. Animals need energy to do simple functions. Plants share some of the energy they have to the organisms who eat them and other consumers to the other. We can classify organisms in an ecosystem depending on their nutrition. The first one is what we call the producers. They were also called the autotrophs since they made their own food. Plants belong to this classification. Second are the consumers, which were also called as heterotrophs. These organisms are dependent to other organisms for them to survive. All animals belong to this classification. And lastly, we have the composers. These are the organisms that break down dead organic matter into simpler substances. Fungi, pests, and other microorganisms belong to this classification. We have three types of consumers. First are the herbivores, who only eat plants and always place as the primary consumer. We, secondly, we have the carnivores, which are the meat eaters, and they were placed as a secondary to tertiary consumer. And the omnivores, who can eat both plants and animals. Omnivores can be placed as primary, secondary, or tertiary consumers. Now that you have recalled about ecosystem, let's now analyze how transfer of matter and energy form in between organisms. For us to know how this transfer happened, let's learn what food chain and food web is all about. Food chain is a diagram that represents the feeding and energy transfer relationship from producers to the final consumers or decomposers. Here in this example, the mouse eats the corn, then the snake eats the mouse, and the owl eats the snake. And when the owl dies, fungi and other microorganisms will break the bodies down and turn into nutrients. The nutrients along with sun and water cause the plants to grow. Let's have this another example. Now it's your turn to design your own food chain. Place a number to arrange the following organisms in order to create a food chain. Let's see if your answer were correct. The first organism in the food chain is the plants since it is an autotroph and it is not dependent to anyone because they can create their own food. Followed by the mouse as a primary consumer since among the organisms given, they were the only one who can eat the plant. Next is the snake who will eat the rat and lastly, the kegel as a tertiary consumer. In an ecosystem, you can create a lot of food chains. An interlocking or crisscrossing pattern of multiple food chain is what we call the food web. Now that you're already familiar in a food chain and food web, let's move on to the last part of our discussion which is all about the trophic level and energy flow. All organisms are dependent to one another and to their environment, where it belongs in order to survive. The process of who will be eaten and who will eat 
establish the balance and flow of energy in an ecosystem. The one that is being eaten gives energy to those dependent on them. Eventually, the one that receives the energy will bring it back to the ecosystem the time it decomposes. To illustrate the flow of energy in an ecosystem, we can use an energy pyramid. The position of organisms in an energy pyramid is based in their sequence in the food chain. Where producers in the first tropic level at the base of the pyramid and predators are at the top. The energy flows through an ecosystem by passing the energy from organisms at what at one trophic level to organisms to the next trophic level. There is a maximum of four trophic levels, as you can see in the table. The flow of energy follows the rule of 10. It states that only 10% of total amount of energy in a food chain goes to the next trophic level since 90% of it has been consumed by the organism itself. Biomass is defined as the total mass of species at the trophic stage. At higher trophic levels, living forms of species appear to be larger. However, since they receive less energy, their population becomes smaller and therefore producing less biomass. The balance of nature is a concept which describes the state of equilibrium in all living organisms and their environment. A um, harmonious relationship reflects a healthy ecological balance. Humans play a very crucial role in maintaining the ecological balance because they have the highest thinking capacity in comparison with other organisms. It is very important to maintain this balance as it assures our survival, stability, and most importantly, our existence. This already is the end of today's lesson. Love your environment for protecting it. This is Sergio Vilante. Goodbye.